Howdy, everybody. Welcome back to the Best Wines Tasting Room, where, uh, you know, some of the world's greatest wine dignitaries just somehow keep finding their way into this place. We're, we're constantly awed and humbled by, uh, by the folks that visit us. And uh, today we have one of the true greats, Giovanni Fulinari, uh, from Tenute Ambrogio Giovanni Fulinari. Complicated which, name, huh? Yeah, no, but it rolls right <laughs> off the tongue, man. Yeah. You know, Italian is such a cool <laughs> language. It's, yeah. the, uh, anyway, uh, Giovanni's here, um, and we want you know, Giovanni's, uh, you know, Giovanni and his and his and his dad Ambrogio, they they own uh, probably half dozen of the top estates in Tuscany. Now, but for the sake of brevity today, because we could go on for hours, literally. I mean, Giovanni is like an encyclopedia. Of Tuscan information, the man's amazing. Wow! But we're gonna we're gonna focus today on on uh, on one particular wine from one particular estate uh, that these cats work with, and basically it, it's a it's a wine that I was always intrigued by over the twenty years I've been tasting wine. It's a wine called Il Paretto, and basically it's um it's a hundred percent Cabernet Sauvignon wine from their estate in Chianti. Now, Giovanni, when did you plant this vineyard, the Cabernet Sauvignon part of the vineyard? Well, we started when we we thought we had to um, create new wines for uh, from the area. So that's when the Super Toscans were born. Actually, they were born a little um, before, but when we started, uh, in, which means the early 80s, uh, in the, we were very few uh, of us producing these type of wines. And the, the first wine we started with in the area, very close by to the Nozzolo estate, which is in Greven Chianti, that's between Florence and Siena, was Cabreo, and that's mm -hmm. a blend of Sangiovese and Cabernet. But we felt mm, that, that was like most of the Super Toscans made at the time, were either blends or straight Sangiovese, because straight Sangiovese you were not allowed to use and make a Chianti Classico, because Chianti Classico at the time forced you to use Canaiolo as well, which is another red variety, and 20% uh, white varieties, Trebbiano and Malvasia. Kind of crazy. <laughs> well, that's the, <laughs> the era of the fiasco. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So the nice straw bottle, easy going, easy drinking, jug wine every day on the table, like bread yeah. and like water. Yeah. But these were very different. So our idea was also to, to try uh, and see the potential of Toscan in making uh, um, an IGT, a so-called Super Toscan, but using only Cabernet Sauvignon. Because of the Tenuta di Nozzole had the, the, the right, uh, uh, we believed it had the right climate and, and also the right soil, we planted the, the Cabernet Sauvignon shortly after we started with the Cabreo in, in Zano. Uh, so that was around 1981, mm. uh, 1982 was the first vintage of Cabreo. And so in, during that time we planted some of these Cabernet vineyards in Nozzole and uh, by the time the vineyards were like seven or eight years old, we decided to, to try and make a, a straight Cabernet instead of doing a, a blend in Nozzole also. So the first vintage of uh, Il Pareto was 1987. Was this a top secret project at the time or were you letting some of your neighbors in on what you were doing? Well, you know, <laughs> so that's a tough question. Uh, <laughs> it, Italians are uh, like the old world, uh, not as much as the French, but they, they don't like to... Well, at the time, we didn't like to share that much of our information, with the exception of few producers that we've always been good friends with. Uh, and some of these are the ones that we started the, this, this new venture of the Super Toscans with. Yeah. Uh, but I would say half and half. So not no big secrets, but then again, we wouldn't just tell everybody what we were doing. It was kind of, you know, our own thing. Yeah, so. exactly. Cause, but, you know, pioneering. And I was wondering yeah. if other people in the area were kind of looking at you like you're kind of pazzo. Like See, Cabernet, Cabernet. Well, the, uh, thinking about that story, the other thing we pioneered in, uh, again, uh, we were among the first with the Super Toscans. Not the first because there were few of them that started before us. Not many, by the uh, way. Not He's many. Very a, ca a couple. <laughs> well, the, the example in the area was, was the straight Sangiovese with the Montevertina Pergole Torte mm -hmm. and the, the blend with the Tignanello that right. started in 1972. So... That was 10 years before. But the other mm, uh, interesting wine we started making there among the first, actually probably the first was a Super Toscan Chardonnay. So the, the brother of the Cabreol Borgo, which is the blend, is called Cabreola Pietra, and that's 100% Chardonnay. And the vineyards are in Panzano in Chianti, which is a very good area for, for Sangiovese. But at the time, in the late 70s, people were kind of tired of the Sangiovese and, and trying to explore new things, but mostly reds. Mm. When people around us, our neighbors, 
uh, discovered that we were overgrafting some of these already existing in good shape, fairly new vineyards with, with some uh, Chardonnay, which they didn't know really what it was, but they knew it was a white variety. Mm. The idea of having us planting in Panzano white variety, they thought we were crazy. They, people started <laughs> shouting at us, what are you doing? It's like swearing God, you know, and then... Uh, we finally came out with a white Super Toscan as well. Yeah. So that was, that was also in, an interesting project. People thought we were crazy, by the way. So, so the vine, it was a, it, obviously, it, we talk about the whole Tuscan encyclopedia thing, right? Unbelievable. Well, I'm so, sorry, you asked me the question, so I was, no, you know, no. I, I kind of... Uh, but that, that's uh, awesome, that's why we're went here. Went off and off, yeah. So, so uh, was the plan always to do 100% Cabernet Sauvignon wine? From this vineyard? Well, at the beginning, the idea was to make a blend in not sort of like we did for the Cabreo. But then, yeah. when we started vinifying this, and we discovered that this Cabernet in Nozzole was yielding, was making a wine that was uh, not a typical Cabernet, but had a lot of Toscan character into yeah. it, we decided to, to, to make something different and to make a straight varietal. Right. See, so... Basically, the, uh, you captured the essence of Tuscany. You were kind of shocked that you did with Cabernet yeah, Sauvignon yeah. and said, what the hell? Why not? It's good. So it, it was a surprise. Was, you, you are right. It was kind of a surprise. So we, we, we took advantage of that, mm. I think. And in fact, the, the thing I like about this wine is that this clearly shows how uh, such an international variety like Cabernet Sauvignon can uh, in Tuscany yield a wine that has a lot of Tuscan character in it. Yeah. And so I, sh I always, I like to say this to some uh, Tuscan people, producers, that are afraid that with all these international varieties we're gonna totally ruin the image and, uh, and, and, uh, and the origins of, of Tuscany and its wines and make wines that are just in for the international palates. Yeah. Every time I have arguments with these people, uh, I tell them to taste Il Pareto, and when they taste it, they always think that there is Sangiovese in it. <laughs> so this is the clear demonstration that even an international variety in Tuscany has a lot of terroir, yeah. which makes sense, because as we said before, it would, not, it would not be logical for us to make in Tuscany, where we have much more difficulties in the laws, in the climate, uh, in the labor cost, than other, you know, new countries or, or different wine countries, it would be logical to make a wine um, with an international variety like Cabernet Sauvignon and just have it taste like any other cabs. Right, right. You know, and, and that, that's the key to this wine, because believe me, there, there are a lot of straight Cabernet or straight Merlot wines that are very internationally styled, for want of a better word, coming from Tuscany. And they're, they're done that way for a reason, because they want to they grab some market share. They're not, some of these guys aren't looking for, for wines that necessarily taste Tuscan. They want to grab people that are drinking Cabernet from Napa Valley or something like that and bring them into Tuscany. But the key to this wine is, is the Tuscan nature of the terroir. The terroir is so strong in this wine. Giovanni is completely right when he says, my God, everybody thinks there's Sangiovese in it. I mean, mm -hmm. tell people it's 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. They kind of freak out like, no, 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 no. And you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. The distinctive nature of that terroir outside of Greve, those cholesterol soils, the elevation, the, everything coming together to create, to me, one of the coolest wines produced in Tuscany. 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, thanks. That's but, a nice No, but, but still. Because <laughs> you having so many wines, so many good wines in Tuscany, that's a, that's a great compliment. No, but, 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 but you know, how often is it that a wine does it all? And that it appeals to such a broad base, stylistically, based on the fact that it has terroir and it has bridal character. There's cassis. You, know, you get these current qualities. You get the classic, typical Cabernet mm -hmm. Sauvignon flavors. A little bit of that lead pencil and graphite character coming through. But then you get like just the, the kind of little bit of that untamed nature of Tuscany, man. Yeah, that earthy, gamey, yeah. Yeah, leathery. It's there. Yeah, it's, it's there. there. And the acidity. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the nice thing about this is, uh, beha besides the result, is the fact that I always say in, in, in this country, people are crazy about, uh, about the Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa, which are absolutely interesting wines. Uh, this is a good compromise because for those typical Cabernet drinkers, um, this is a great Cabernet, but it's an alternative to those, and in, for some people that find it hard to drink maybe a whole bottle of, of, a, of a Napa Cab because of not just the alcohol level, which is pretty high in this one too, but also the acidity that is not, not very present, and so the wine is a little, 
uh, heavier to drink, although it, it feels maybe softer. Mm. Um, this is a great compromise. So it's good for those that like more elegant and old world style wines, but it's also good for those that, that like the typical Cabernet. So what I always hope, um, because I, I love the, the steakhouses in this country, mm -hmm. I think you guys have great meat. To go there and say, okay, you drink the typical cab, but well, try a different cab. Yeah. Uh, this would go well, very well with steak, by the way. So. I couldn't have said it better myself. Pisteca Fiorentina, yeah. or just or a nice, or nice ribeye. Yeah. Glass of Porter Il Pareto, yeah. game over. Giovanni Polinari, thank you so much for coming today. Well, thanks yeah, cheers. to we you really and, and, and for your time and the support. Yeah. That was very important. Check this out.